um, about it. So let's get into it. The World Health Organization has termed the coronavirus outbreak as a global health emergency. In Kenya, much has and continues to be said about the students who are stuck in Wuhan, the epicenter of this disease outbreak. You can hear about their isolation, their status, when they will come home. Government says not just yet. And whether they are safe. Many continue to question the capacity of our health system to handle this, even as we hear about suspected cases that have turned out negative in Nairobi, Mutomo, and even in Mombasa. But tonight, I want to break it down for you. What is the coronavirus, the symptoms that healthcare officials are looking for, its diagnosis, where did it come from, and what do all the terms and medical jargon mean, and more importantly, how can you protect yourself? So let's start with the latest numbers uh, on this, shall we? Now, um, let's pause there for a moment and take a look at these latest numbers that we got from the World Health Organization, right? They're doing reports, situational reports every 24 hours. So these numbers are as of yesterday. 75,204 confirmed cases worldwide. And here's another one. In China, out of those, you can see a majority, 74,280 confirmed cases. Now, um, the number of deaths, and sorry, these are the confirmed cases outside of China. World Health Organization says they are now at 924. This is in 25 countries outside the epicenter that is there. These are the latest deaths. 2006, that is as of the 19th of February, 2020 and this is in china alone and around the world there have just been three deaths outside of china now only one case has been reported in africa that is in egypt and that was of a latest of a foreigner now latest country to confirm new cases is iran but so just what is this coronavirus now First of all, before I show you this image, let's note one thing. It is one word. That's not a typo. I know even as journalists have struggled with this. Now, you've heard it termed as a novel virus or new. And that's because it had not been identified in humans or animals before December 2019. Now, simply put, no one had ever heard of this particular strain before. Now, corona means crown in Latin, and I wanted to show you that image. It's called that because it's got protein spikes around it. Um, and so it looks like um, it's wearing a crown when you observe it under an electron microscope. Now, there is actually a family of viruses. They're called coronaviruses. They cause respiratory and gastrointestinal symptoms, right? So to do with your lungs, your breathing area, and your digestive system. Now, the respiratory uh, syndrome, or rather the respiratory symptoms, are the ones that are mostly mild, from a common cold to pneumonia. In some instances, this family of viruses can cause some severe disease, as was the case here, as you can see in 2003, with SARS, which stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus. That broke out in 2003 in China. And then there is MERS, Middle East Rep Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus, that broke out in 2012. Both of these killed about 800 people. Now, as you can tell, I think the number was about 800 to 900 people. And this is why you can see this current outbreak has killed far more people than both SARS and MERS, with a death toll now, you know, at about 2000, 2006. So you can see why uh, scientists are very worried. So just where did this coronavirus come from? Now, to answer that question, you will hear terms like zoonotic diseases mentioned a lot. Now, zoonotic diseases simply are those diseases that are transmitted from animals to humans. Coronaviruses are zoonotic uh, in their nature. In fact, SARS, as we talked about earlier, uh, originated from a camel. MERS originated from a civet cat. But the World Health Organization says the animal from which this novel coronavirus originated is yet to be identified. But what is known is that it occurred in a group of people with pneumonia who had been associated with a seafood and live animal market in Wuhan. It's not being transmitted from human to human, but we will get to the mode of transmission in a moment. But first, I want us to take a look at the symptoms of this outbreak. And let's pause here for a moment because they can range from mild symptoms such as a fever, a cough, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing to the more severe symptoms, pneumonia, kidney failure, and eventually death.
Now, the incubation period, which is the time between infection with the virus and one starts to show symptoms, is thought to be between 2 to 14 days. Now, in line with these symptoms, there has been a new development as we continue to learn more about it and the symptoms it causes. Nomenclature, that just means the naming. This new virus has been given a new name. It is called the SARS Coronavirus 2 or SARS CoV 2. Now, the disease that this strain of the virus causes has now been named COVID 19. This is the virus and this is the disease that it causes. These new terms were given in January this year. So don't get confused when you hear these terms being used. Now, here's the next important piece of information, which is how is it transmitted? Let's take a moment here. So one, droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes, all right? Here's another method by which it is transmitted. Touching someone who's contaminated with the virus. Uh, there's also another one here. Getting in close contact with animals carrying the virus. But like we said, at this point in time, uh, that is not known. Now, because we said it is new, it is novel, you know, there are no known treatments or vaccines. Um, but wait for a minute. How do you prevent transmission? Well, it's just the simple rules of good health and etiquette. Here. Cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze. Um, you can cover it with your hands with a tissue paper, which you then discard, um, or you can cough over your elbow. And for many who are going out into areas where they believe there could be uh, persons who are infected, you see them wearing the mask. Um, and here's another way you can prevent transmission of it. Avoid close contact with infected persons. Of course, uh, that one goes without saying. And a very important one, washing your hands with soap and water. These are just the basics of good hygiene. Here's another one because we said it originates in animals. Cook meat properly before eating it. So much continues to be tested and known about this. Can Kenya test for this? Yes, Kenya can using a test that is called PCR, which means polymerase chain reaction that identifies the virus by its genetic makeup. But I think really it is the ability of our health system to handle this outbreak should it occur here. That is the big question. And like we're saying, and I've said throughout this explainer, it's a new virus that had not been identified in humans before December 2019. You'll continue to see much more, much more jargon, um, even as we continue to understand this particular strain and how it behaves. So you will no doubt hear more information as scientists work to understand it further. Like we said, the main questions are, what is Kenya's capability to handle this. Now that you know everything you do need to know about this corona virus. Now we've been asking you this on our feedback question, right? What are your thoughts on how Kenya is handling it? Let me see if I can take a look at some of your feedback tonight. You can SMS us 22422 or you can send me a tweet. The hashtag to use is tonight. That is how I am uh, tracking your feedback. Let's take a look at one just before we take a break here. Jerim Okeo says government has made no significant move to respond to the coronavirus threat. Neither to our brothers who are stuck in Wuhan nor the people back home. Therefore, we should have immediate strategies like setting up hospitals with enough facilities to contain the situation. Well, they say they have done so. They're seeking more funds as well to set up um, an isolation unit right here in the country. Continue to send in your feedback. The hashtag is tonight. I want to know what your thoughts are regarding this. Let's take a break because when we return, more on health. This time on that story we reported earlier and that is on the HIV Health Survey coming up. <laughs> 